Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have some language barrier romance recommendations. I am a complete 100% sucker for this trope. Anyone who knows me knows this. I love a language barrier. I, I just do. Every single one. Sucker for it. This is my second recommendation video for this trope, so I will link part one down below for you. I'm gonna forewarn most of these books are alien romances because this is apparent in a lot of alien romances, which is a main reason why I love alien romances so much. But I do have two historicals that I'm going to be mentioning first. First, I have Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks. This is a rivaling families historical romance. Evelyn in here is from the Armstrong family and Graham is from the Montgomery family, the king of their land. I realized that these two families have been basically kind of like warring, rivaling with each other for quite a long time, so he's forcing them to get married. A few years ago, Evelyn was thrown from a horse while she was trying to run away from her family. Her family was forcing her to marry a man that she knew would be just super abusive to her. And so she decided to get on a horse and run away to escape that marriage. She gets thrown by a horse and ends up losing her hearing from it. But no one knows this. They just think she hurt her head and like, Evelyn hasn't been the same since. She's been able to live her life thus far by lip reading. She's really good at lip reading, um, but she has not actually spoken out loud in years. So when she meets Graham, she's been told her whole life to hate the Montgomerys, but when she first meets him, she is utterly intrigued by him because he has such a low voice. She's able to kind of hear it a little bit and she just wants him to keep talking and talking. <laughs> um, and the two of them end up getting married and she has to go to his clan with him. At first, Graham and Evelyn aren't able to communicate to the capacity that Graham would want to, but then Graham quickly learns that Evelyn is deaf and then she's able to confide in him a little bit more and um, feels more comfortable talking around him because she was uncomfortable doing it back then because she thought that she would be sent to the man that um, she thought was going to abuse her. So the language barrier portion here isn't necessarily the whole book. There are a few communication barriers because she's not able to hear, but this love story is just like epic to me. I love it so much. It's one of my favorite historical romances. And another historical is When the Earl Met His Match by Stacey Reed. This one has gotten a lot of buzz recently. A few of my friends have read this one and it is just such a joy. This is the romance between Hugh and Phoebe. Hugh's father is uh, very sickly and the one request that he has for a son before he dies is for him to find a wife. Um, he's going to take over the earldom when he passes and so he just wants to see a son with a wife before he dies. Um, so Hugh doesn't know how to meet women. Um, he is very sheltered at his house. And he actually doesn't speak. He's a speechless character. Um, so he communicates through sign, um, his own version of sign. The only thing that Hugh can think of, the only way he can think of finding a wife is to put an ad in the newspaper. And Phoebe, who's a lady, ends up across said ad and think it's just so ridiculous that this man will put an ad in the newspaper to find a wife. Um, so she decides to write him back, basically trying to make fun of him, being like, I can't believe you'd actually do this. This is ridiculous. And she doesn't know who this man is, but they start up like a bantering over letter relationship. And then Phoebe gets a little bit of a bind and she ends up on Hugh's doorstep asking for help and they have to get in a marriage of convenience. Phoebe doesn't realize when uh, she first meets Hugh in person that Hugh is not able to speak. And so for a while, the two of them are at an impasse with how to communicate with each other. There is a language barrier, uh, but then she slowly starts to learn his version of sign and it is so good. Like I love this one. This one was such an amazing read. Now we're going to be getting into the alien romances. First is one that I've recently read. This is Taken to Vraxia by Elizabeth Stevens. This one's a little complicated for me to explain. Like there's just so much going on with this book. It reads like a fantasy book though. If you want like a full four sci-fi romance that goes deep into world building and the way of the world, like it is so cool. So Miari in here, she lives on a moon okay, that is attached to or like orbiting this one planet called Varaxia. The moon is actually a slave moon that is mainly inhabited by human women. Miari in here though is half human, half another alien species, so she has like red skin. Anyway, the king of Varaxia, the planet that the moon is like orbiting, um, figures out that a bunch of like supplies are being sent to this moon. He's like, why? Like what is going on on this moon? So he shows up on the moon and he didn't know that there was a moon full of slaves orbiting this planet and he is mortified he is so angry and he's even more furious 
when he realizes that one of the women on the moon that's one of the slave women is his fated mate Miari. This is about him taking Miari back to Varaxia even though she is terrified of him. Doesn't know what he's saying. There's a huge language barrier between the two of them. She knows nothing about what he says. So she's terrified when this man just ups and takes her back to his planet and all she's known her whole life is that his people sexually assault her people. Like that's all she's known for years, her whole entire life. And so she's terrified of this man, but she's also so kick butt. She stands up for herself and stands up for her friends and will do anything to save her people. And oh, this one was so good. Despite what his people have done to Miari and her people, Raku is like, a consent king and he's learning actually what consent like means because there's so many like differing things when it comes to their cultures with his women and Miari and her people so it's just such an amazing sci-fi alien romance. Next I have Riv's Sanctuary by A.G. Wilde. So Lauren is our heroine in here. She was abducted from Earth about a year ago. Up at auction, she gets bought by this like little gross alien and he wants to purchase Lauren as a gift to his wife. And the wife, when she sees Lauren, she's like utterly disgusted by her. She's like, that is disgusting. Get that human out of my sight. And so her husband is like, I don't know what to do with this woman. So I'm just going to take her to the animal sanctuary on the planet. And so he drops Lauren on this doorstep, on Rib's doorstep, who owns this animal sanctuary, because he thinks that Lauren is literally like an animal. And Rib is pissed when he opens like this box that's on his doorstep and there's human women in it. And he doesn't know what the heck she's saying. It's even worse though, because Lauren is such a chatterbox of a woman and um, he does not know what she's saying. And he's like so annoyed by this woman, but then he starts falling in love with her. He doesn't know what to do with Lauren. So she kind of helps him on the farm because she wants to like pitch in in some way. And Rib is just so sweet. He's grumpy but he's a sweet hero. I love like alien romances that take place on a farm for some reason. I just love it. <laughs> so this one was such a joy to read. Next, I have Wed to the Alien Warlord by January Bell. This is the first book in a series that I'm pretty sure is full of the language barrier trope because the human women that are in this series, like they don't have translators. So at the beginning of this story, Earth is in trouble of being overtaken by some evil aliens and they need like certain technology in order to um, save themselves and certain protection. And so they form an alliance with the aliens that are in this book series on this planet and are like, okay, we'll form this alliance with you if you give us women because we're short on women. And so they decide to trick an all women like government crew, military crew, and send them to the planet with no way of getting home. The women think that they're just here to make a treaty with these people and have like a treaty ceremony with them. And so they go on with this treaty ceremony. They don't have language chips, like like translator chips in them. So they have no idea what's going on or what they're saying during the ceremony. And by the end of it, there's like a raid on the ceremony. And um, like aliens are tasked to protect the human women. And they basically go out in the jungle trying to seek refuge and the hero in here the warlord ends up with our heroine named nikki who is kind of like the leader of the all women crew she has no idea what's going on <laughs> um but they're trying to survive in this jungle together because she can't uh, not understand a word that he's saying but we know in his point of view like all those women got married like there was not a <laughs> There was not like a peace treaty being signed between them. There was no peace treaty ceremony. Like they got married to each other and she has no clue. And so he keeps calling her certain names that mean like wife or mate. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I don't know what you're saying, but he's calling her his wife this whole time. <laughs> and I think by the end of the story, all the other women aren't able to understand their language still. So I think each book in the series is probably gonna be like a language barrier trope. Next I have Stolen by an Alien by Amanda Milo. This is the first book in her um, Stolen by an Alien series. This book isn't my favorite alien romance, but it a great job I think at setting up the other books in the series and the language barrier trope in here was amazing because it like lasted the majority of the book <laughs> and I loved it. Angie in here is taken from earth illegally and Rock ends up saving her from being essayed by certain aliens that purchase her from an auction and he is a part of this alien 
race that protect and are kind of bodyguards to their equivalent of angels, like a princess angel, that are very similar in physical appearance to humans, except they have wings and humans don't. So he mistakes her as one of these alien species that are basically like princesses to them. And so this is about him protecting and saving Angie while trying to return her back to her world, which actually isn't her world. <laughs> it's the alien like princess world. While he's protecting her, he ends up falling in love with her and he's not supposed to, like his alien species is not supposed to fall in love with these princesses. Like they could be executed if they figure out, uh, but Angie's not from that species of alien. So with the language barrier to open here, I really loved because the two of them fall in love with each other through their like acts of service and just like the way that they are with each other. And it was really beautiful. But be aware this book really sets up the other books in the series. So there's a lot of side characters being introduced to you that will be appearing in the other books in the series. And so the one of the reasons why it wasn't my favorite book ever was because you get a lot of side character time instead of main character time. But I ended up loving those side characters when their books popped up though. Next I have Fall by Claire Kent. This is the third book in her Hold series but you can read this one as a standalone. Lena in this book, you did meet her in book two, but she was like there for maybe like five pages. Like she's not a major character whatsoever in that book. So you could totally read this one as a standalone. Lena gets in trouble with the like space government and ends up being like thrown onto this prehistoric planet basically. On this planet, the only people that live on it are cavemen of sorts. They have their own like language that they speak with each other and they basically live like cavemen. Um, so she gets reluctantly rescued by our hero in this book who's a part of this group of cavemen. His name is Roan and he is so sweet and so she doesn't know the way of his people and he doesn't know the way of her people and so it's like a little bit of a challenge trying to get to know each other. And so one of the things that he does to kind of like flirt with her shows he's interested in her, she doesn't know what he's doing. Like, <laughs> like the women of his people, one of the ways that they show that they're interested is that they like brush the man's like beard and hair. And so he like waits for her to do that. And she's like, I don't know what you want to do, buddy. Like, what are you doing? Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like they cannot communicate. And so she ends up learning his language and getting to know him more. And it's very, it's a very simple language where they don't talk in sentences. It's like one word phrases. And so it's easier for like her to learn his language than for him to learn hers. He's learned a few words throughout the book, um, but this one was so great. It really reminded me of Transcendence by Shay Savage, which was in my first language barrier romance video. This is technically like an alien romance because this takes place on a different planet, but both of them are like, humans so next i have frame luca by victoria aveline this is book number two in her clicanian alien romance series alice was abducted from earth with a bunch of other human women by some evil aliens and put underground on clicania they've also kidnapped other aliens that are on the planet including luca the reason why these women were kidnapped is because some of the clicanian people are really wanting women to come to their planet to repopulate their um population uh because they're afraid that their species are going to die out the people who abducted them are scientists of sort and they want to run some tests so they put alice in luca's cell luca was taken by them the two of them basically have to stay in the same cell but luca is like chained up and he cannot understand a word that she's saying but she's trying to like comfort him and talk to him um but they cannot understand each other like whatsoever he has like a thing like a chain over his mouth, like a gag over his mouth basically. Um, but when Alice is speaking, he cannot understand a word that she says, but he ends up falling in love with her regardless. And he also figures out that they're fated mates on top of that. Them being trapped together is just this a very stressful, high intense situation. And so that part of the book was so entertaining for me. And the fact that they also fell in love with each other while they were captives, <laughs> I was obsessed with it. When it comes to a Ruby Dixon one, I have Steph's Outcast. This is book number 13 in the Ice Home series. So I do recommend reading these books in order though, especially the Ice Home series, because they kind of like build off of each other. So if you're close to this one, <laughs> you should know that this one does have the language reader trope. More so when you read the IPB world books, like Ice Home, IPB, more so the beginning books in the series, are the language barrier trope because that's when they first crash um but this one is a rare one in the ice home series where there is a language barrier trope steph is one of the human women that live on the ice home beach and she is tasked and really wants to get to know jute who is an alien on the planet that like no one like knows about but he's considered like an outcast 
from the island people and he is a single father to pack so we also have a single dad romance which is like a rarity in ipb world so i loved that too but something happens at the beginning of this book while steph is trying to talk to juice um they don't understand each other she does not have a language chip at all and she just doesn't understand what he's saying either but anyway something happens at the beginning of this book and juice has to save steph and brings her back to his cave with him and his son and has to kind of like nurse her back to health because she got like bonked on the head or something so for the majority of this book like they just don't understand each other and i think like resonance happens i know this one is deep into a series but i really want people to read this one and quickly the last book that i have to mention is one with a very long title um we have how my boring life was completely derailed and i was absolutely railed by two big blue alien dudes from outer space by emma eliza <laughs> this is a short little alien romance novella it does not take itself seriously whatsoever our heroine ends up getting beamed up into a spaceship by this alien king that really wants her and this is an mmf romance with him the heroine and his bodyguard the king can understand our heroine human but she and the bodyguard cannot understand each other um so there's a language barrier in that aspect so sometimes the king is there to communicate for them and sometimes he isn't there to communicate with them so they have to learn what each other wants without language there this one was such just a fun little novella if you want to like a fun little alien romance to pick up i recommend this one it just it doesn't take itself too seriously it is funny at moments but also gets a little chili pepper if you know what I mean but anyways there you have it those were some romances with the language barrier trope let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you have any recommendations for me down below if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me the um like speech bubble emoji in the comments section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching I will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all